Hey there folks, good morning. In today's video, we have this block that's tied to a string, and it's moving around in a circle on a horizontal surface with no friction. Here I've labeled the initial radius of the circle and the block's initial tangential speed. Now, imagine that we pull on this string very slowly from below. This will cause the radius to gradually shrink and the block is still moving in a circle the entire time. If we keep pulling, then eventually, we're going to exceed the breaking tension of the string and cause it to snap. The question is, what's the final radius of the circle when that happens? Unfortunately, we can't use energy methods to solve this one. So let's get started by creating a free body diagram. The first thing we should do is define some directions. Instead of using x and y, let's call the outward radial direction positive r. As for the forces acting on our block, there's only one, which is the tension in the string. And since we have circular motion going on, we can't forget about the centripetal acceleration. That pretty much sums up our free body diagram. Next up is Newton's second law in the radial direction. Since the tension and the centripetal acceleration point along minus r, we get a negative sign on both sides. But I'm going to divide those out. Recall that centripetal acceleration is defined as v squared divided by r. If we insert that definition and use r initial and v tan initial, we get an equation defining the tension. But if we try to use this at the final radius, we only have one equation for two unknowns, and that's not good. Let's try applying our rotational techniques and see if we can find another expression somewhere to help us out. I'll start with the generic vector equation for torque. More specifically, this is the torque exerted by the string on the block, and it's relative to the center of the circle, which I'm calling point Z. Since the vector direction isn't super important in this problem, I'm going to break this equation down to the scalar magnitude version. The magnitude of the position vector can be replaced by our initial, and the magnitude of the force vector with the tension. Theta is the angle between the outwards direction of the initial radius and the inward direction of the tension. And since these two are located along the same line, but in opposite directions, theta will be equal to 180 degrees and the sine of that angle will cause the torque expression to go to zero. That's a pretty special result. And the reason is that there's a strong connection between torque and angular momentum. This reminder tells us that the sum of external torques on an object is equal to the change in the object's angular momentum through time. So if there's only one external force involved and the torque it exerts is zero, then the block's angular momentum never changes. That just might be the second equation that we're looking for. So let's investigate the angular momentum next. I'll start with the generic vector form of that quantity and then break it down to a scalar magnitude. We can substitute the magnitudes of the position and velocity vectors with r initial and v tan initial, respectively. And this time, phi is the 90 degree angle located between the outward pointing radius and the initial tangential speed. If we calculate that product, we get the following. And this is the exact same value that we would find for the final angular momentum. So there's our second equation, as well as its value. Let's go back to the tension. Here's its definition applied at the final radius. 
if you look closely, you can see the beginnings of our angular momentum expression in the numerator on the right. The problem is that it's missing r final up there. And there's an extra factor of speed as well. What we can do is multiply the right hand side by a special form of one. When we multiply, we get the square of all three variables upstairs, which we can rebrand as the final angular momentum squared. By the conservation of angular momentum, the final amount squared would be the exact same as the initial amount squared. We could even rewrite our equation like this, since we already went through all the work involving L initial. All that's left is to switch the positions of the tension and the final radius variables. Once we do that, we can raise both sides to the one-third power. Everything is now ready, and we're free to start plugging in our numbers. On my calculator, I get a final radius value of approximately 0 0.440 meters. And that is our final answer. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope this helps.